God bless you all. Have a wonderful new year. I want to speak today. I want to speak concerning the thought of backslidden. How many people are in this hour? I wonder how many of you love somebody that you know is backslid. Could, could I just have you represent that person? Because my heart goes out to the backslider today. Every one of you that know somebody that's backslid, would you stand? And um, I thank God for so many that have turned toward the Lord and have struggled afterward. And we're going to pray right now for everyone that somewhere is not where they ought to be that needs God's mercy and grace. Dear Father, we are thankful that we are here today. And we're so glad that we're able to lift up your name and worship you. But somebody has stumbled and somebody has fallen and somebody has slipped along the way. I ask God that you would touch and that you would minister to the backslider in a way, dear God, that gives them a return to relationship with thee that is filled with victory. We ask it in the name of Jesus. And I do thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. And God's people said amen. God bless you. you may be seated. And even we who are Christians find that we backslide sometimes in certain details. I know that uh, the last few weeks I've backslidden and I usually don't share all my private things, but I had gotten my weight down to 204 pounds and was getting ready to get below 200 and I don't know what happened. <laughs> but I went through the suits that I had looking for one that I could button the buttons on the suit coat and they didn't exist and I don't know how I have slipped but I know one thing that if you fail and you love the Lord you're not finished yet and God is going to help you don't give up when you fall don't give up when you fail know that God still loves you. Jeremiah chapter 3, looking in verse 14 and 15. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you. I love that, don't you? Turn back, O backslidden children, because I am married unto you. Because this is a connection that Jesus has with us, that he says that he loves us beyond our understanding. And it's spoken of in Jeremiah here, I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city, two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. I want you to know that the best thing that God can do for you is to give you more knowledge and more understanding when you are struggling, when you find it's not easy. I want to tell you that the way that you get to another level, and I hear it again and again from saints. Oh, that God would bring me to another level. The way to come to another level is for God to begin to give you greater knowledge and greater understanding. If you want better physical in your body, you need more knowledge and understanding. If you want to get along in your marriage in a more excellent way, you need more knowledge and understanding. If you want to be able to have have business that works, you need more knowledge and understanding. If you want promotion at work, you need more knowledge and understanding. If you want joy, you need more knowledge and understanding. Let God help us to know in this moment that the reason we stumble is because we don't have as much knowledge as we think. We don't have as much understanding as we think, but God has enough knowledge to cause 
cause you to be brought to a new level physically, mentally, spiritually, financially. Every failure is a matter of not enough knowledge and understanding because God sets before you an open door that no man can shut. If you've ever had anything that went wrong financially, it was because, no doubt, a lack of knowledge. And I want to tell you, I trust God blesses you, but if he blesses you, you better have some knowledge or it's going to go down the drain. Somebody's going to tell you, you need to put your money here. And all of a sudden, you found it disappears. You need to understand in this hour, you need more than God's blessing. God, when you bless me, give me knowledge. When you bless me, give me knowledge. When you bless me, give me knowledge. How many single people are looking for a mate in life? You better get some knowledge before you connect. You better get knowledge after you connect. You better get knowledge when you're doing well in that marriage. And you better have knowledge when you feel like I can't put up with this one more minute. You better say, God, give me knowledge in this moment. I don't need to make a decision when I'm upset. I don't have to make a decision when I'm angry. I don't need to make a decision when I am frustrated. My God, give me knowledge and give me understanding hallelujah give God a praise offering thank you Jesus oh hallelujah thank you Jesus I want to take you to a few places in the word today looking in Matthew 13 and 23 but he that receives seed into good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, and understandeth it, and understandeth it, and understandeth it, which also he beareth fruit and bringeth forth some an hundred, some sixty, some thirty. What do I need? I need to understand God's word. It's not going to bear fruit until I understand it. I can do the right thing and not understand it, and I hit a wall. I can do the right thing and not understand it, and it brings me to a place of disappointment. But when I understand God's word, when I understand his ways, when I understand his promises, I begin to find that I am healthy because you can't bear fruit until you're healthy. You can't bear fruit when you're under pressure. You can't bear fruit when you're under stress. You can't bear fruit when you're in depression. You can't bear fruit when you're angry. You can't bear fruit when you're under tension. You bear fruit when there is something good going on. And may God help you to go on in understanding until you can bear fruit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And we bear fruit because we're healthy. We don't bear fruit when we're under pressure. Let the rain cease. Let the sun not shine. Let the ground be hard. And see how much fruit you bear. You say, well, I'm a good tree. You better be planted in a good place. Because you're not going to do any good work until you're planted in his purpose. And knowledge is God's way of blessing us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, give me knowledge. My God, give me knowledge. My God, give me knowledge. How many can say, God, give me knowledge? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 7, consider what I say, Paul is saying, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Some of us, we have understanding in a couple things. 
and we're able to find the benefit because of what we do have understanding in. I see some people that are geniuses when it comes to a computer. I mean, they can take that thing and, and it's amazing what they can do. And they say, come bring your broken one to me. I'll make it work for you. And they know it from one end to the other. And they're blessed in it. But that doesn't make you a good husband. And that doesn't make you a good saint. And that doesn't make you victorious. It only makes you victorious with computers. But you got to be victorious with more than one thing. My God, I ask in this hour that I would be blessed with the gifts that you give me. But I'm asking God that when I stumble, I will come to you and know that I lack knowledge. And that's the reason I've stumbled. But if I turn to you, you said I set before you an open door and no man can shut it. Hallelujah. You need understanding and God is good enough to cause perhaps every person here to be good at something. Some people find that art just, they be able to sketch something out in a moment's time and somebody else can't even begin to get the thought of it. There's somebody good at basketball. There's somebody that's good in sports. There's somebody that's good in music. There's somebody that's good in math. There's somebody that's good in something. And then there's those that think, they don't need no spelling bee for me. I'm not going to be in that one. No siree. You're going to find that there's areas that you're not good at. And what do you do? You thank God, number one, for the areas that you're good at, but you don't stop there. And you understand, if I'm going to be victorious, I need understanding because I backslide not because I don't love God. I backslide not because I don't want to serve Him. I backslide because I'm tempted with this and I'm tempted with that because I lack knowledge. And when I understand that sin brings death and the devil is alive, but God has promised me he sets before me an open door and if I can have the wisdom to walk through that door there's no good that will be denied me give me understanding my God give me comprehension open my mind that I can be blessed your gifts will take you a long ways but your negatives will empty the benefits that your gifts bring you. I don't care how much money you get. You get a divorce, you don't have as much as you did. I don't care how much you are able to succeed. You need to understand that God is saying, don't stop here. You need more wisdom than you have. You need me to help you because you lack something. But I'm so grateful in this hour that God says that he's married to the backslider. That's a hope. Because it would be so easy to me to believe that the only thing waiting for the backslider is the pit of hell. But I'm telling you, what's waiting for the backslider is the arms of his love, the arms of his mercy, the arms of his grace, the arms of his power. He's waiting with his arms stretched out, and he says, Come unto me, all ye that have backslidden. Come unto me, all you that have fallen. Come unto me, all you that are frail. Come unto me, all of you that have disappointed yourself. Hallelujah. He said, I'm married to the backslider. I'm married to the backslider. We need to understand that the backslider is not that much different than us. We just have a little more knowledge. And so we got up again. We got a little more knowledge and we didn't stay down there. We got a little more knowledge and we said, God, forgive me. We got a little more knowledge and we said, God, give me another chance. But God loves every backslider. Hallelujah. And how does he build us up? He changes our understanding. He gives us knowledge. He gives us knowledge. Do you know the sickness would not be able to control you if you had knowledge? 
disease would not be able to destroy you if you had knowledge understanding of all that is a part of the physical realm would bring you to a health that would be unbelievable and every person here would be looking for God to give you a hundred years of good living if you had enough knowledge but we die ahead of time because we lack something even when we're spiritual even when we're victorious even when we're anointed there's an area in your life that you are overlooking my God I I need knowledge from A to Z. I need knowledge in everything there is for me. I need knowledge from thee. Give God a praise offering. <laughs> to be a backslider, you had to go forward first. You can't slip back until you went forward. So let's pray for the backslider, whoever that backslider is, because every backslider sometime, someplace, some moment had a right thought and called upon the name of the Lord out of an honest heart. And God is able to help us if we but trust him. Oh, to believe God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Paul is saying, consider what I say, and the Lord give you understanding. Because if you don't understand, you can hear anything and everything. And it just bounces off after a while, and you begin to think, yeah, I heard that, but I forgot. I was going in victory, but I lost the way. But I want to tell you that the knowledge of God is greater than any knowledge that you will get anywhere else. And all knowledge that comes through men, you need to ask God, give me a revelation. And help me to understand it in a richer, a deeper, and a more profound way. Dear God, I do pray. Hallelujah. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 tells us why we're destroyed. It's not because of the devil. The devil is the author. But the devil isn't your biggest problem. What is your biggest problem? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And we need to know in this hour, what is it that you're asking God for? You're asking God, give me more wisdom. Give me more knowledge. Make it your first and greatest desire, even greater than ministry, even greater than anything that is material. Ask God to give you wisdom and knowledge. Because if you got wisdom and knowledge, you won't get fired most of the time. If you got wisdom and knowledge, you won't be going a dead street. You won't be going in a way that doesn't bring blessing. If you got wisdom and knowledge, you will prosper and you will be blessed. Thank you, dear Father. Hallelujah. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And why is it that we have a lack of knowledge? Because we don't understand the value of knowledge. We're looking for something other than knowledge to be our vehicle to success. You need God to give you understanding and knowledge. And how many times people that want to get married, they meet somebody that is interested in them. And the person that they look at, they think, well, maybe not perfect. I, he needs to get saved. He needs to get more than get saved. He needs everything. But salvation is the first thing. And if you're going to have anything in this hour, God has to perfect you in giving you knowledge concerning the moment that you're in. Because it's that thing that causes us to be blessed. It's that which causes us to be encouraged. And what is it as we return to the beginning of this message? Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord. 
I'm so thankful that he's able to call backsliders children. Sometimes we think that backsliders are nasty. No, they just act that way. But haven't you ever acted nasty? Haven't you ever been way off balance? Haven't you ever been frustrated? Well, maybe you're a woman. I don't know. and perfect, but uh, most of us men, we know what it is. And I think some of us women would say amen too. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord. For I am married unto you. This week the Lord has just given me an understanding where the backslider is. Because in my mind I thought he's down in the gutter. I thought he's trash. I thought he's just not sincere. He's not willing to pay the price. But no, God calls backsliders children. And he said, I still got a connection to you. And what a connection. I got a connection that doesn't break. Marriage is meant for all time. And I thank God that he uses that term to show how far he will go when we miss the mark. How far he will go when we aren't where we ought to be. How far he will go when we aren't all that we could be. How far will God go? He starts with your worst moment. And he calls you children. Oh, that's enough to make you praise the Lord. He starts with your worst day, and he calls you children. I've never, ever felt so hopeful concerning backsliders as I do in this hour. If I were to minister in this hour from this moment on, I want to ask God to take the backslider and bring him out of the miry clay, to set his feet on a rock to stay, to put a song in his heart, a song of love and hope and praise. Hallelujah. I thank God that I see the backslider in a different light. He hasn't failed the Lord. He hasn't failed the church. He hasn't failed me. He hasn't failed you. He stumbled. And God is able to raise him up. 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 Raise him up. Hallelujah. 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 I will take you one of a city and two of a family and I will bring you to the promised land. I'll bring you to the land of promise. I'll bring you to Zion. You will see the promises of God begin to be fulfilled in your life. I will bring you to Zion. Oh, hallelujah. And I will give you pastors according to my heart. That's how God solves your problem. That's how God ends your backslidden condition. He gives you pastors after his own heart. I'm asking God to raise up pastors after his heart. Pastors after his heart. Pastors after his heart. Pastors after his heart. You need God to raise up pastors after his heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Which shall feed you? Which shall feed you? I want you to know you're getting fed this morning. I want you to know that God is feeding you this morning. I want you to know that you're being fed. Hallelujah. And what will it they feed you? Knowledge and understanding. Knowledge and understanding. Knowledge and understanding. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. The first thing you have to understand is you're a human being. And when a good-looking woman walks in front of you that is strutting her stuff, you notice it. It's human, but I want to tell you, it's not for you. It's not for you. It's not for you. Take one glance and then say, God, but I've tasted and seen that you're a good. And I know in this hour that I don't have to let my eyes control me. I'm asking that my heart would be quickened by thee. Knowledge and understanding. And you will understand what the devil uses in the man that falls. The devil still points it toward the man that stands up. More preachers have failed over women and over money. And I'll tell you, you men, your biggest problem is going to be women and money. But God's able to cause you to have enough knowledge that none of this brings you down. You can say, thank you, God. You have set before me an open door. And I can walk through it. And no man can shut it. I can go forward. And you women that are blessed in a physical manner. Within your heart, there is a thought, notice me. Oh, notice me. Notice me. Notice me. But when you understand that what you really want is God's love, his spirit, his power, and I didn't come to strut, I came to praise that he has brought me out of the miry clay. He has set my feet on a rock to stay. He's put a song in my soul, a song of praise. Praise! Hallelujah. A song of praise. Hallelujah. A song of praise. A song of praise. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask all to stand in this day. And I want you to lift your hands and praise the Lord. Because God dwells in the midst of the praises of his people. Praise God that you're here today. Praise God that you got hope today. Praise God that there's encouragement for you today. Praise God that there is strength for you this day. Praise God that he sits before you an open door that no man can shut.